Hi, I'm John Tupper. I'm the Managing Director of IntroCar, which, uh, as you should know by now, is the home of the Prestige Parts brand. Uh, in the last uh, video I did, we uh, did something which was really uh, the story of Prestige Parts, the history of the brand, uh, what it's about, how it's become instrumental in keeping uh, a lot of these heritage Rolls-Royce and Bentley motor cars around. Today, I thought we'd do something a little bit different. So we did before the story of Prestige Parts, now today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to do the story of a prestige part, or actually part, um, which is the, the principle really that we wanted to achieve was to uh, give some actual specific examples, get a little bit nerdy, look at some of the technology and the techniques we're using to produce these parts, which should give uh, a bit of feel of what we're trying to do and how we're actually doing it. So with uh, no further ado, let's crack on. So here we have a brand new hydraulic brake pump fitted from 1965 to the latest models in 2003. We make this brand new, used to supply it as a reconditioned part, but now we make a new part because it's much more reliable. Here's why. In a reconditioned pump, that's generally all you're gonna get. This is what's in a new pump. The most critical part, and there's plenty of critical items here, is this. This is very, very, very high spec. So the difference between the size of the internal diameter of this part and the external diameter of that is a massive one micron. What's a micron? Well, very small. Uh, I think the best illustration I have of that is that. A, uh, a grain of smoke is around about four microns. So this is a very, very tightly toleranced part and you get that in one of our new pumps. So this is a decarbonisation or decoke set. Uh, this is actually fitted to the uh, late Turbo R's uh, and uh, also the Rolls Royces of the same era and the Anage Red Label. So why did I bring this out? Well, I thought it was pretty illustrative of, of some of the challenges we face. A little while ago, um, Bentley had the uh, bright idea of, of deciding they weren't going to supply independents like us. Uh, anything from their range, which was a challenge for us because in these kits that we made, uh, we had a few components that we still sourced from Bentley Motors. When they threatened that, we just went straight out there and made everything that we needed, which was uh, literally hundreds of thousands of pounds of products. As a consequence, everything you see in here has been sourced or manufactured by us from the most challenging, the head gasket, to the very simplest, such as the sump gaskets or paper gaskets that you'll see in there. What we have here is a coolant gallery. Now this is fitted in the, uh, in the Mark VI and Silver Dawn and R-Type, four and a half litre engines. It's a gallery that fits um, from the front to the back of the engine. These holes deliver coolant into the cylinders, uh, into each of the six cylinders. So coolant flowing in there, and then being distributed across the, the cylinders from this gallery. This is a bit of an example of some of the things we have to go through to get a decent product. And I'm gonna show you an original version here. This is what we were originally working from and you can see it's made differently. We're gonna, we'll show you a close up in a bit. This is actually folded. So it was a flat piece of, of brass was folded and then you can see that it's soldered along here. And that's how that is kept together. The challenge we had, and you can actually see it, if we go look straight down there, you'll actually see that this is a bit like a snake. It really isn't straight. And that's because the heat from the solder distorts the tube uh, as it's being applied. So we decided the only way to do it was to produce it in a singless, single seamless tube which is, looks pretty straightforward, but if you have a look at that, dead straight, lovely, much better than the original was. The only challenge was we had to make a kilometre of that tube. But that was the only way we could do it to the standards we wanted, so that's what we did. This time, what we're looking at is the air intake uh, grill that is fitted on Silver Clouds and the early Silver Shadow and T1. Uh, it was basically a finisher, went in the front of the wing, just below the headlight. Uh, now, 
the reason I brought this out was because it's a little bit of a different type of product uh, because we had to go through a few different manufacturing techniques to be able to produce this which is quite a challenge if you want to make, make it exactly as they made it in the first place. The main challenge was this. Firstly, this was originally produced, this surround here was originally produced in one piece. So you had a very uh, expensive metal tool that was used to press force a flat piece of steel, mild steel, into this shape. It's then trimmed to get a nice even finish around here. Now the problem with that was the actual cost of that tool would have made this impossible to produce. So we actually used a company that specializes in uh, aeronautical engineering for this. Uh, and uh, they did it slightly differently. So what they did was they produced it in two halves. You can't tell, but it's actually in two pieces from here to here. And we used a rubber press. And rubber presses, the tooling for that is much, much cheaper. You still get the same challenge with trying to get this nice and even. But as you can see, we've done a pretty good job of it. They also, rather than using a steel mesh, uh, which, was, which was difficult to uh, fix, they actually used a laser cut grill. And just as a, an interesting nod to the aeronautical industry, you'll see that purple adhesive there. It's actually used on the Eurofighter. Works very well on this. Okay, so this is an example of one of our passion projects, one of mine particularly. I've been wanting to make this for about 20 years uh, and finally, finally managed to put together the suppliers I, I, uh, I needed to get it uh, absolutely right. This is the pillar light, which is fitted to uh, some of the clouds. It was a bit of an, it was an optional extra. So it's fitted between the front and rear doors on the, on the door pillar. Uh, so the, the actual challenge with this, weirdly enough, is not all of this bit. The thing is, it's these lenses because these are injection molded. Injection molded means that you're paying a lot for a tool. The parts themselves are very cheap. Uh, and you get literally thousands of them. So as I say to people, I'm going to be buried with these things because I've got far too many. But this is a real passion project. This is one of the things that we did, not really because there's money in it, but it's because it demonstrates some of the skills that we have, some of the supply chain that we're able to put together. Uh, and it's also just a thing of beauty. Very proud of that one. Here we have a steering reservoir. Uh, fitted from around about 1987 uh, all the way through to 2003 on various Rolls-Royce and Bentley models. They tended to crack. Uh, originally, this was probably a blow molding. Uh, and again, the problem with, with making this is that the molding tool, the numbers you're going to buy, uh, are just not supported by the sales volumes. So this is actually 3D printed. So we do a bit of 3D printing now, not as much as you'd think, uh, a lot more 3D modeling than printing, but, uh, but this is indeed a 3D printed part. It's, uh, it's a way of making uh, something available that just simply wasn't available before. If you look inside, you'll see there's a funny little bulge, which is just in there, just right inside there. That's actually a magnet, it was in the original part. The purpose of that is to trap little particles of metal that might have got caught in the fluid and stop them uh, going through the steering system. So another example of how we're making something available that wouldn't be available without the, uh, without the ability to innovate and use different technologies. So this is an example of a, a, one of the many safety critical parts that we make. Uh, this is a steering track rod ball pin. Uh, because of the nature of it, uh, if this breaks or snaps or you've got any problems like that, it's pretty serious. Uh, and I just wanted to sort of bring this up as an example of some of the, uh, the products that we do, which uh, we need to be extremely careful about uh, specifying and testing and so on. So when you make one of these, something that's very important with this is it can't be a brittle part. It has to be what they call ductile, which means that if you were to go over a pothole at high speed, uh, you wouldn't want this snapping because then you would lose all your steering and you would definitely have a crash. The idea is to make this ductile so it would bend rather than snap, so you'd still have some contact with the road. Uh, so the, the material that you use, absolutely critical. That has to be certified. It has to be treated so it's hardened. It's hardened just here, but only on the surface, so only to around about 15 thousandth of an inch deep, and that prevents it wearing out. When something like this is made, we always have not only material certification, 
dimensional testing, but also laboratory testing. And every one of these, a batch of these that comes in, and you'll see they're batch marked, so we know exactly when we receive them. Each one of those batches is tested. This is a, a slug, which is which actually, if you get really close, you can see three little dots. That is where the hardness testing has taken place. So we get different hardnesses at each of those three places. So we know that this is still soft on the inside, but hard on the outside, just here. So obviously when you're making this, you're going to mask this area off, heat treat this part, make it hard, but the rest of it remains ductile. Absolutely critical. I really want to compare what we're doing with this chromed bumper all done in the UK with uh, the other product which we don't feel is uh, appropriate to be selling under our brand. You can see the quality of the finish here internally. Obviously this is chrome plated, not stainless steel. We look at an example of the stainless steel version and you'll see that it really is a lot less uh, professional in its, in its manufacture. Here we can see the overrider, this is our one, and this is what we're trying to improve on. We have a lot of clients who are absolutely uh, dedicated to using the right quality on their cars. So we are building the entire bumpers in the UK right now, and we expect them to be available in the first half of 2025. So that's front and back overriders. So thanks for joining me again. Uh, I hope you got a little bit more information about some of the things we're doing. Uh, there's obviously a lot more. If there's anything you'd like me to talk a bit more about uh, or uh, anything that you think we should be doing, get in contact. Uh, I'd love to, uh, love to speak to you. Uh, we'd be very happy to, to look at that. We're going to be doing a few more in-depth projects in the coming weeks and months, uh, and I look forward to welcoming you then.